Hi there guys, my name is Matt and today I'm going to talk to you about how to wire up a Nest third generation uh, learning thermostat with a Worcester Bosch Greenstar 25i and 25si boiler. Um, it will work with any boiler, this, this wiring, uh, and I'll give you some explanation as I go along. But with the uh, Worcester Bosch it will be a lot easier for you because all the connections will be wired and labelled and you just literally need to push the colours uh, the coloured wires into the right positions. Um, so basically I've got the the thermostat controller over there on the wall and I've got the wireless box unit over here. Um, and to start off with I'm just going to talk about the wiring um, and uh, then I'll move on to how to how the wires are positioned and then move on to how it's actually plugged into the boiler. Um, but as a disclaimer first of all I'm not a qualified electrician but I've had all this work signed off and um, I'm confident with doing electrical work. If you're not confident, then please do hire a qualified electrician to do this for you. Um, and second of all, this boiler is on at the moment, and um, you should not have your boiler switched on when you're when you're um, doing any wiring at all. So, I'm just I've just got it on at the moment um, because I want to show you a demonstration of how it turns on and off based on the thermostat on the wall, um, and also the room is heating up. So, starting off with the uh, the wiring, I've got a two core. Uh, you need a two core cable running up, um, it doesn't need to go into the ceiling, but just running over to the um, wireless controller. So I've got it basically going up the ceiling at a right angle, going across there, then down to this uh, controller over here. And I've actually used a four core and earth cable, a three core and earth cable, because I thought that you need a three core and earth cable just like you did a um, uh, bathroom um, extractor fan but with this particular thermostat you just need two uh, cables so you need two core um, and that's because the this is receiving signals from the temperature controller via a wireless signal rather than a cable so all that this is powering is the positive and negative for the battery that is in the um, thermostat so if you take it off the wall, it still stays on. It's got a battery in the back of it. So it's just positive and negative for the battery. So it's basically turning AC power into DC power and then powering the thermostat over there, uh, the controller. So first of all, I've got a brown wire going into T1 and a uh, gray wire going into T2. And so over here, if I pull this off the wall, I've got a brown wire going into T1 and a grey wire going into T2 and all that's doing is um, having adding a positive and negative to this uh, the power of the, this battery on the wall. And then I'm going to talk to you about how to wire the boiler up to the wireless connection over here. Uh, first of all the wireless box needs to be about 20 centimeters away from the boiler. Um, that's just written in the instructions. It's, it's got something to do with how the how the uh, how well this wireless controller works. So I've just I've got it roughly about 20 centimeters away from the boiler. And then I've got this five core flex cable. You can get this from Tool Station, B and Q, uh, Wix, uh, Screwfix, anywhere. Uh, but I'll give you a link to all the products that I've used in the description um, so that you don't have to go looking for them and finding out the names and things like that so it's a lot easier for you. And starting off with the left to right, I've got a blue wire and a brown wire there. I've got the blue wire as the neutral and the brown wire as the live, that's constant live. So I've got it coming into the boiler and we're working on the 230 volt outside here because this is the uh, cables actually powering the boiler to turn on, this is the inside. So we've got the the brown wire which is the live coming in and going to the live side here. Then I've got the blue wire coming in and going to the neutral on the outside here. So that basically turns this wireless controller on. So you see this green light here, that's because these two cables are wired up. So that's all this does and that then allows it to connect to this controller on the wall. Then we have a relay circuit that's inside here which turns the boiler on and off dependent on the temperature in the room which is which is uh, set by this temperature control on the wall. And what I've got is a grey wire 
let's refocus. Going into T into number two, and a black wire going into number three. So the grey wire is on the returns, which is which is a constant live, and should be. I should have wrapped this up with a brown uh, electronic tape to show that it's constant live. It's running into in through this section here, and then going into the constant live of the outside of the 230 volt section here. And then we've got the black, which is acting as a switch live, which tells the boiler to turn on and off based on the temperature in the room, running in through here, and then black is running into the radiator symbol. Um, so that's pretty much it, but um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about why, why this is all wired up the way it's wired up. Um, and then of course we've got, um, finally, a, an earth cable going in here and to the earth on this side and then an earth over here on the left so it's running in over there and then earth over on the left so basically the live and the neutral that were over there are turning this on and that allows it to connect to the the wireless controller on the wall over there and then we've got the uh, constant live running here um, to turn turn that on, like uh, which is what I just said. So we've got the brown and and the and the blue turning this on, and then we've got the grey running as a constant live for the relay circuit, which is in here, and we've got a black as the switch live for the for the radiator for the relay circuit inside here. So there's those two are basically turning the power of the boiler on and off for the radiator. And then finally, we've got the earth over here, just earthing the system uh, for protection on the system. And um, the, the, same, the same principle will be used for any combi boiler, but the wiring on this one will be a lot easier for you just because you can see exactly where the positions of all these wires go. Um, and when it's wired in, just to make it nice and neat, you've got one of these knockouts. And you can see here that there's different diameters you can slice off uh, so you use a Stanley knife and just slice off. I've got the third one sliced off here to fit my cable in. And then you can see you've got like a little clamp that holds it in, in position. And I've put it in this one here because it just gives me enough space to move the wires around without getting too fiddly in here. Um, but that's pretty much it. And what I can show you now is the actual, if I push, push that down, is the actual thermostat working. So if I go over to the, the wall over here, the wireless signal is not on at the moment, but it should start start working with the um, the thermostat on the wall. If I click this down, it basically turns the, the boiler off, and if I twist it back up, it turns the boiler on again. And um, you can hear a click with the relay circuit on the wall over there every time you tw every time you switch it. So you might be able to hear it in the video. Just give me one second. Have you heard that? back on again and it gives you a little bit of time on how how long it takes for the it will take for the room to heat up and it's just an estimate depending on how many radiators you have but I'll just show you now that this is the boiler off so if I go over to the boiler and lift up the control over here the um, the boiler is currently not firing because it is uh, the thermostat is telling it that I want the temperature to be lower than the temperature in the room. So the the pump for the radiators is not running. There's no water pumping into the radiators and the water is not being heated um, as it's being pumped around. And at the moment, I've actually got the temperature of the water as 70. So at the moment, the water is too hot. So I'm actually gonna raise, just to give an example, Gonna raise the temperature to 80 just so that this demonstration works, um, because the boil the boiler only turns on when the water is lower than the maximum that I've set, and also um, that the temperature in the room is the the temperature that I set on the wall over there is uh, higher than the temperature in the room. So now this should work. Um, just go over here and turn the and dial so the temperature in the room is 16 degrees I'll raise it up here 
you hear a click. And then if we walk over to the boiler, you can hear it firing up now, if you can hear that. And there is a fire symbol over there because the temperature in the room is lower than the temperature that I set on the boiler. So that's pretty much it. Um, that's all wired up correctly, uh, all signed off and working. And once you've finished, you basically just put this face plate back on and just click it down. And that's, that's, that's just it. You screw that on, put the face plate of the boiler back on. Um, so hopefully that video has been helpful for you. Um, I've got loads more stuff uh, coming on, coming along about how to um, what, how to do the waste disposal for a basin sink, um, how to wire up a mirror light, uh, and I've got a, a new towel radiator in here. Um, and we've got some porcelain hoser tiles on the wall, but I'm not going to show anything. I didn't do any of the tiling because I'm not good at tiling at all. So um, hopefully you'll see a few more tutorials on how to do bits and bobs for the bathroom. Uh, and as we fit this kitchen, you'll see um, some of that coming together as well. So if you like this video, please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.